Hi, welcome to the third chapter in FlexCon's webinar series on sustainable packaging. We're talking with sustainability expert Dan Riendo on the role packaging plays in shaping environmentally friendly practices. He is a member of TLMI's Sustainability Committee, the APR Communications and Public Affairs Committee, and he's a keynote speaker for sustainable solutions in the packaging industry. Let's take a look. Hey, Dan. Hi, Marguerite. How are you? I'm good. So in episode two, you said brands need to think about packaging design when talking about sustainability. Can you tell me what that means? Yeah, absolutely. You know, design can really play a huge influence uh, in recyclability and sustainability. The significant uh, advantages of ensuring that the packaging has sustainability requirements, both from a brand perspective and from a consumer perspective. And there's actually nine attributes um, that contribute to sustainability that we highlighted in our report. So if sustainable packaging drives consumer product selection, what can be done to move away from fossil-based materials? You know, the big, the big bucket here, or the attribute that we really focused on is sourcing and really looking at products that are either compostable material, biodegradable, or bio-based. The big thing with these, this type of, uh, these types of attributes is really understanding the end of life for your package. You would never want to put a compostable label on a PET container because you, you know, the label will, will compost way before the packaging would, and it also will, will uh, contaminate the composting areas that these get brought into. So really, you have to understand the end of life when, you, when you're looking at it from uh, using, less, using less fossil fuel and really reducing your, your carbon impact. So what are ways brands can enhance the environmental and economic efficiency of packaging? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. And I think, you know, what we're really focused on really about the functionality and creating less waste by improving the, you know, the functionality of the packaging, whether it's less packaging waste. So if you're using a thinner, a thinner label material on your on your packaging, down gauging, uh, keeping the product fresh. Consumers want their products to to stay and last longer in when they purchase them. So how do you, you know, keep the functionality of, of product freshness? Uh, within the package and also protecting the product. The package is there to for an aesthetic perspective, but also to keep the product safe and, and making sure that the consumer at the end of the day gets the product that's that they're expecting and, and really securing that product. So I think really less packaging waste, keeping it fresh and protecting is really how um, you know brands can drive the efficiencies of, of packaging. So one topic this report covers is taking a product's end of life outcome into account, meaning yeah. the final stage of a product's life cycle. So in a circular economy, once the user is finished with the product, it goes back into the supply chain instead of the landfill, right? So how do we improve the circularity at a product's end of life? Yeah, you know, I really think looking at end of life is is one of the most important aspects of sustainability. You know, I mentioned it earlier, but understanding where the packaging and the product will eventually end up after it's been used is one of the most important important aspects. And that's because it it helps with the circularity of the of the whole value chain. I think you know ensuring packaging materials can either be recovered after disposal or recycling is important. So whether it's recycle, you know, making sure the product is recyclable. So for instance, I've, I've mentioned this before, but having a wash off adhesive for PET containers with a film label ensures that you get the most amount of PET back into the value stream by putting mm -hmm. paper labels or putting you know, labels that are detrimental to the recycling process reduces the amount of PET available to then go into our, you know, the next topic, which is recycled materials. So ensuring that, you know, there's containers that, you know, brands are making claims and making bold statements about the amount of PCW or post-consumer waste that that's going to be put back into packaging. So ensuring that you have recyclable materials along with the recycled content of materials are, are key in, in really driving a circular economy. Because if you have recycle, if you have the ability to have materials be recyclable, then you can then have the materials be ready for post-consumer. It's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a word salad, but really it's it's having recyclable materials allows you to have recycled content uh, mm. products available and solutions available. And then also the, the last one is really convenience of recycling. And you know, allowing and understanding, you know, 
what's out there from a, from a from a recycling standpoint. Packaging that packaging need to be designed to be easily processed through recycling methods and separation and avoiding contamination. I think you know a perfect example is is reseal packaging. You know, with a rigid lid on a reseal package for makeup wipes or baby wipes, it really hinders the re the recycling process of that of that material. Having a reseal closure would allow for better for better recycled process and allows for more uh, material to be used as a PCW film. So all these are really important to to drive end of life and drive circularity uh, throughout the value chain. I think you know when you look at it, understanding the life cycle of the packaging, uh, you need all three of these steps. So from a sourcing functionality and end of life to really make sure that you're you're meeting a holistic view from a you know from a sustainability perspective. Okay. So it's clear sustainability is no longer a choice. It's a necessity in the consumer packaging sector. Uh, but there are definitive ways the industry can adopt sustainable solutions. In our next chapter, Dan and I will outline four steps to build resilience and achieve sustainability that is both practical and impactful. Thanks, Dan, and Thanks, see you next time. Take care.